Hey, how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my blog. Alright, okay, I'm just gonna share this over so slightly. There we go. <laughs> Alright, okay. So at the end of the last one, I said that this one would be entitled Year Half Over because I'm an idiot who can't tell the difference between six months and eight months, apparently. Um, but that, it's also just going to be kind of a reflectory one that's sort of partway through the year of how this year has kind of uh, has kind of gone and has kind of surprised me quite a lot. Um, as hopefully those of you watching will know because you've seen the vlogs from the beginning of the year. Um, my main goals this year my two, my two biggest goals this year was to become a homeowner, which was obviously the really, really big one, um, and to release my next book, um, which I'm working on. <laughs> I'm working on. Um, now that the sort of the getting the flat together and decorated and looking smart is sort of coming to an end, hopefully I'll be able to concentrate a bit more on getting the editing done and I will get that book released by Christmas. Um, Hopefully, fingers crossed, it will happen and it'll be it'll be all good and and you know I, I will do what I've set out to do this year. Um, as for the other big goal, um, the the becoming a homeowner one, it's happened a lot faster than I thought it would. It really did. I mean, like at the beginning of the year, I was like, oh yeah, it's probably going to take me a while to find like the place that I want. Um, when I sort of shot the first homeowner uh, vlog, I was like, yeah, this is probably going to take most of the year. Yeah, these homeowner vlogs are probably going to be fairly spaced out. Um, it's going to take a while. You know, I'm not going to worry too much about it. It means I'll be able to get more savings behind me. It means, you know, um, I'm going to be in a slightly financially better position. Um, but, you know, going into the whole expensive process of buying your first home. <laughs> God, is it an expensive per um, God, is it an ex ex it's an expensive process, uh, definitely an expensive process. Um, but I was like, yeah, it's, you know, it's going to take a while. Um, it's probably going to be like towards the end of the year. You know, if I'm lucky, it might even be in towards the beginning of the following year. You know, if I'm not so lucky, it you know, all depends on like the housing market and, and what's available in my, my price range and you know, stuff like that. Um, and then I was a homeowner in April. <laughs> And I kind of went from like the beginning of the year, I was kind of like, la 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 la, it'll take as long as it takes, I'm not going to worry too much about it, to like, literally my my first official, um, my first official day in, in this property, the first official day that I had where I was no longer uh, in residence at all um, in, in my, my previous uh, flat that I was renting, literally two years after I'd moved into that flat. So two years after I'd, I'd moved out from the ex, um, I was living in the flat that I owned. Um, <laughs> and it was, you know, I did not expect that. Um, I didn't expect it to take less than four months, really, um, to go from, yes, I finally have enough of a deposit behind me to be able to start looking at properties, to, oh my God, I'm a homeowner. <laughs> Oh my god, that's happened so quickly. Oh my, I'm now responsible for this this wonderful flat that I'm in. Um, and it has been fun so far. <laughs> I mean, it's certainly it's a different kind of experience um, to renting because if a problem comes up, you've got the power to do something about it yourself. Um, so when you when I was renting, when um, you know, if, if there was an issue with, with the cooker, you know, even if it was something that you could just DIY and fix, um, you couldn't because you'd have to let your landlord know or your letting agent know so that they could get it repaired. Um, and when I was living with the ex, there was this one time where, uh, this was this sort of the Christmas period as well, where the cooker stopped working. So, you know, I, we contacted them right away. Nearly a month later, Nearly a month later, after we chased them, somebody finally came out and repaired it. And it was one of those things where I was fairly certain what was wrong with it. Um, and if 
the cooker had been mine to do stuff with, I would have fixed it. Um, but because it wasn't, because you become liable if you do these repairs yourself and you, know, you can use parts of the deposit and, and stuff like that, I was like, we have to wait for them to do something. Um, so I now own a halogen, which I wouldn't have owned at all um, if it wasn't for the breaking down of that and, and the four weeks it took for the oven to be repaired. So we had to eat, <laughs> you know. Um, I don't, I don't regret having the halogen, but I don't really use it. It's been a while since, um, since I've actually used it because why would you use it when you've got an oven and you're just cooking for yourself? Certainly, the last couple of years, I, I've not needed it, so I'm contemplating whether or not to hold on to it or to, to get rid of it at this point. Um, but I've got, you know, the power to sort of make decisions like that now um, because the the oven is now mine. Um, so. Um, when I moved in to, to this lovely place, and um, this is this is something that's kind of gone down a bit more recently. Um, well, yes and no. Um, when I moved in, the the cooker top, the the hob, wasn't working. You try doing anything with it, would shut out the power. So I literally, um, my lovely mummy's got hold of a hot plate for me to use as a temporary solution. Um, I guess I've been using since pretty much since April. <laughs> um, like there were so many other things that needed to get done first and get sorted first it wasn't really a priority um you know i i'm not a particularly cookie kind of person at the moment i'm hoping to encourage myself to actually do a bit more of the stuff that i should be doing now instead of just throwing it in the oven easy kind of meals to make um so like my one of my goals from this point of the year onwards is to start eating properly <laughs> um and the one thing i kind of really did miss was um sort of doing fried rice dishes um and you can't really do that on a hot plate because a hot plate doesn't get hot enough um so they were more like steamed rice dishes which were tasty enough you know um but they just don't have the same sort of flavor to them they don't have the same sort of the quality isn't quite as good um they're actually slightly more stodgy as a um as a meal choice to be honest um so once like all right, the kind of other major stuff had been done. So like once the wall had gone in, uh, once the living room was decorated, um, I think I'd painted in here as well at that point. Um, or was it just before I painted in here? I, I don't remember. Um, but I ordered a replacement hob. Cause like, well, it's just a hob. So that's not working. Yes, the oven is noisy. And I think maybe the fan isn't quite set properly, but it works. So I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, so I was like, I'm just going to replace the hob because that's the, you know, the cheaper option. Um, and, you know, I went through I think it was Argos and they offered a, oh, we can take away the old thing and we can, put, you know, fit in the, the new one. So it was, I was like, yeah, all, all nice and, and, and nice and nicey. Um, and then they came out and they pulled the oven out and they discovered that there was only one thing in, in the back and I had a double oven um, on yeah, the double oven, which, you know, basically needed its own thing by itself um, in order to, to, to run. So they couldn't fit the replacement hob. They couldn't even, you know, remove the one that didn't work. Um, so then I've had to, I got an electrician out to basically disconnect the hob. Um, as I said, it, it wasn't working. It was shorting out the electrics. I mean, I obviously I wasn't using it, but it was coming on every time I turned the oven on because it had the same master fuse and everything. So, um yeah, literally, just because it was a double oven, I couldn't have a separate hob uh, without doing sort of like extra wiring and stuff. So um, the solution was, well, I need to get a freestanding oven, which is fine. Um, I had no problem with that. It also required cutting the work up. <laughs> um, yeah, what I'm basically saying is being a homeowner is, you know, there are, there are things, there are constantly things that happen that make you kind of go, oh dear, um, looks like I'm going to have to figure some more stuff out. Um, unfortunately, I got a refund on the, the hob uh, that I didn't, that I, I purchased but couldn't actually have. Um, and I found a nice oven and my new oven is now all in place. Um, still need to, still need to work on the worktop. Um, we cut it, 
we cut it so we could get it in place and then see what else, you know, how much more it needs to be cut. Um, because of the wall going in, we, well, I say we, I, I'm saying we because mum helps me with all the DIY stuff. Because <laughs> she's got a little bit more experience than I do. And she has all the power tools. Um, but yeah, so um, I had spare worktop from the wall going in um, because the worktop that was on the sort of floating island um, had like a curved edge to it, which when the wall was going to be in place would have given you like this curved against the wall and it would have looked weird. Um, and I was like, I'd rather have a new piece of worktop just so it looks nice and neat. And yes, I know eventually I'm going to have the kitchen all sort of redone and then, you know, designed a lot better than it is, but I want it to sort of look presentable in the meantime. And I think that curve would eventually irritate and annoy me and just make me kind of go, no, I really need to get my kitchen sorted. Uh, rather than kind of, oh, you know what, I can get my kitchen sorted when I'm ready to get my kitchen sorted. Um, so yeah, if we can't get the two bits of workshop as they now are sort of into a nice neat trimming um, to get them into place, then there's spare worktop there for us to work with so we will we will get it sorted and it's quite fun you know um helping my mum do all the diy stuff um or finding the bits and pieces that i can do myself um so yeah that's i know, I know it's kind of like a really big not very on topic sort of <laughs> discussion <laughs> um and maybe this is sort of like stuff that'll be better for like next week. But yeah, that's that's kind of, you know, as, as I was kind of saying, you know, I thought at this point in the year, I would still be looking for a property. I'm not only am I in a property, but I'm coming across issues and I'm dealing with those issues. And am I ever getting things sorted? And it's it's nice and it feels good. And it feels like it's such a positive change in my in my life. Um, so one of the other things, the, uh, one of the other big sort of things that I've kind of done as, as a result of that, which is something I've sort of been thinking about before and something I sort of decided I would do once I was a homeowner is I've changed my title from Ms to Ms. Um, because, you know, I'm, I'm in my 30s now and I'm, you know, I'm a homeowner and I'm single at the moment and I don't want to be defined by the fact that I'm single. Um, I want to be defined by the fact that I'm not necessarily an adult because I still don't necessarily feel like an adult, but I, w I want to be defined by the, you know, what I'm doing with my life and not the fact that, you know, I'm, I'm not in a relationship, not the fact that I'm, I'm single or rather that I'm not married. Um, because Ness is a very, very obvious indicator that you are not married. <laughs> um, and it's the reason why I didn't go for Mrs, even though actually there's nothing to stop me from going with Mrs, apart from the fact that everybody assumes then you are married. By going with Ms, it doesn't make a difference. Nobody is going to know one way or the other what your relationship status is, and I don't want to be defined by my relationship status because, as I have said in the previous vlog, I'm very happy and very comfortable with being single. Um, so I want to sort of be defined by me. I want to be defined by the fact that, that I'm an, an individual, I'm making my own choices, I am making my own decisions, I am a more responsible adult than I used to be uh, because I've got, you know, the responsibility of the household um, that I actually own. <laughs> I know it's a flat, but I, I, I own it, this is, this is mine. Um, and I'm responsible for its upkeep, I'm responsible for its decorating, um, hence the lovely colour of purple behind me. Um, so I very much, you know, I want to be defined by the things that I am doing and the things that I am and not my relationship status. And for me, changing from Miss to Ms is that. It's that way of me sort of telling the world to none of your business whether I'm not, whether or not I'm with anybody. It's none of your business whether or not I'm in my 30s and still not married. It's none of your business who I want to date, when I want to date, if I want to date, it's none of your business um, because, you know, it's not, <laughs> quite frankly. Um, I don't want to be defined by that. I want to be defined by what I am doing and what I am presenting to the world, which is, you know, hopefully a young, confident woman who is 
making investments in their future, who is, you know, progressing, sort of progressing in their chosen career path. And I you know, don't just mean my work one where, you know, things have been a bit more positive there this year as well. Um, but also in terms of my writerly one, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make progress. I'm trying to get my life to where I want it to be. And, you know, I want to feel like I'm making decisions to be that person and making decisions to, you know, make to self-realise, you know, the person that I feel like I am now. And I don't feel like I'm a miss anymore. I don't feel like I'm a girl anymore. I don't feel like, you know, I want to be defined by my relationship status anymore. Um, I feel like I'm sort of an adult. I feel like I'm sort of, you know, um, together. I'm, I'm a strong, confident-ish, <laughs> mostly confident woman. You know, I'm progressing in, in, in life in the way that I want to be progressing. And I feel, and, 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 and I know it's, it's a weird thing, um, but when I sort of came back from going into my banks um, and getting them to change my title, um, and, you know, literally within hours, um, both of my online um, accounts had shown the, the change uh, from Miss to Ms. And suddenly I was like, I feel like a grown up now. I feel like, a, you know, I, I feel like a responsible person now. I feel so much more confident and so much more, much better in myself now. And I know it's like a silly little thing, but it made a huge difference to, to my sense of self and to my sense of identity. And it feels better that I have made this change, even though to most people it's kind of a meaningless change, even to most people it's kind of like, well, it doesn't change the fact that you're single. Well, no, I, I know it doesn't change the fact that I'm single. Um, and I know being a miss, you know, if I were in a relationship, you know, being a miss doesn't change the fact that I would have been in a relationship. Um, but to me, as part of, you know, my growth as an individual, as part of, you know, my, my progress, not just this year, but over the last few years, and all the things that I've been through and all the things that I've coped with and, you know, all the growing up that I've kind of done, I want to feel like I have made a, a you know that i've changed um that i've changed in life stages that i've changed in in whatever and it's always struck me as being rather unfair that if i were a boy at 16 i would have gone from master to mister and nobody would have questioned anything and nobody would have gone oh that must mean you're married um and you know the the i have felt it for a number of years and this is one of the reasons why anybody who's read echo will notice all the women in that are misses. There are no misses and there are no misses. They're all mis. Um, and the reason for that is is completely stemmed from the fact that I I don't necessarily think it's it's fair that miss is a title that is decided upon for young girls, and the only opportunity they really get to to change it is when they get married or when they get divorced. Um, and I, I don't necessarily think that's fair. I think, I mean, I know a lot more women nowadays because this is one of the things I was, you know, that I came across when I was sort of researching it and I realised I'm not the only woman out there who wants to make that change, um, doesn't quite know how to go about it. Um, that kind of, you know, if the decision has been made for you um, at, at 15 or 16 um, by one of your parents or whatever, that you are a myth and not a ms then that's what a lot of people get stuck with. Um, I, you know, unless you've consciously made that decision when you've gone in and set up your own accounts. My first bank account was set up, you know, when I was a small child, um, which you know had savings in it that I wasn't allowed to touch until I was a certain age. My second, and, and one of my current bank accounts is that bank account, but kind of like moved from where it was originally because the Woolwich no longer exists. <laughs> But it, it was originally my Village account, um, and it's now by my Barclays account. Um, and yeah, that was a big hassle when I was when I was in university, getting that all changed over because I was told it would work exactly the same, and it didn't because it was a savings account. <laughs> um, well, that was a nightmare and a half. Um, but that, you know, that decision was made, you know, when I was a small child. Um, and then when my dad helped me open my first official bank account, um, my first bank account where I had a card and where I had access to the money and stuff like that, when I was 15, 
well, my dad was there setting it up with me and, you know, the, the idea of being a Miz wasn't even discussed. I, you know, I was put down as what I was put down as. So very much, you know, I wouldn't say I was you know, forced into that sort of decision, but it wasn't like there was a discussion about it. It wasn't like there was a, oh, yeah, you're free to sort of choose what title that you want to go by. Um, so... You know, it, it's one of those things where it's kind of like, you know, and and, and as I said, it's one of those things I've, I've kind of felt since I was a teenager as well, that, you know, if I was, you know, a boy, my title would have automatically changed when I was 16 and nobody would have batted my lid at it and it would have just been part of growing up. Um, but for a woman, you, you are a myth until either you decide otherwise <laughs> or until you get married or divorced. Um, and it's, you know, it's, and you know, in, in my mind, it's kind of like, it's not fair, it's not how the world should still work. Um, it should be a lot easier also to change your title. Um, I mean, so obviously I've had to do it not just with my banks, but I've had to do it um, with my utilities as well. Um, my gas and electric, super easy, super easy now. Just went on logged onto my profile, went into my, you know, my account details, click of a button, done. Um, and a lot of my, you know, online accounts, that simple. Um, the banks, you can't do it online. You, you do have to go in. Uh, but these were absolutely fine. The uh, particular branch I went in with, uh, into with Lloyd's had never had to do it before. At least the people I dealt with had never had to do it before. <laughs> So they were a bit more of a hassle, um, but, you know, it, it got changed and, you know, they didn't have any problem with it because you, you know, didn't pay for work, you just change your title. They can just change it for you. Um, there, there should be no issue with that. Um, and there wasn't. It was just they'd not done it before. So there was a bit of a, how do we do this? Um, faff. Um, Southwest Water was the most annoying. When I couldn't do it through the online. Um, all of the helplines that I found for them that weren't to do with paying bills um, were 0300 numbers, so that would have cost me money, and I was like, I don't really want to do that. So in the end, I had to write them a, a inquiry message. Um, and a few days later, literally, this was, I think it was yesterday, I got an email back from them saying, yeah, we've changed the titles, it's it's fine, we tried to ring you to, to sort it out, but we can get hold of you by phone, but it's fine, it's all sorted now, you can change. I'm like. Just make it easier. Just give me the option to do it myself. <laughs> um, so, like, the only one I've got left now to actually sort is my my mortgage. Um, um, I, 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 I know I need to sort that one soon because, like, having lots of different titles and everything kind of uh, isn't great to your credit score. But now that I've got the credit score, but you know, I need to sort of get everything sort of. Um, smoothed off and everything under the same under the same title um and you know it it feels like a pretty good pretty good change and pretty good thing to have done um yeah um <laughs> again i seem to have sort of like tangent off a little bit um as you can see it's something that you know i'm i'm very sort of strongly you know committed to and, and strongly passionate about and it, it was very annoying that it was a little bit more of a hassle than it should have been because you know it's not like I was changing my name all I wanted to do was go untick one box and retick another box um not like I'm changing my name or my gender or anything like that I just don't want to be a miss anymore because I don't feel like a miss anymore you know um so I shouldn't have had to you know written to Southwest Water to get them to push a button for me. <laughs> they, they should have a helpline, a free helpline, just general inquiries, and they don't. Um, or at least not one that I can find. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, 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 and you know, it's another thing that I've done this year that is, it's good. Um, but you know, it's, it's Again, it's a bit rambly and ranty and ranty, nah, whatever. It's a word and it's a word. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think I think I'm gonna sort of end this sort of here before I sort of babble off onto another uh, tangent. Um, 
hope you guys have sort of found this one interesting. Um, that was a bit of an odd way of retrospecting my year so far, but I hope you kind of get the general gist and flow of, of um, the fact that I'm certainly feeling accomplished so far this year. Um, so, the next topic is adaptations. <laughs> the next topic is adaptations. Um, I will, I won't say anything more. Um, I hope you guys are curious then to find out what I'm going to be talking about next time and I will see you next time. See ya. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others and if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya!